The Talk Show. Good evening and welcome to it. This is The Talk Shop with me, Masichaba Mushweshwe on SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. Our mover and shaker tonight is an entrepreneur, young entrepreneur. She's the founding CEO of Yego Communications and she is Rapelang Rabana. We'll be getting up close and personal with this young woman who believes that eagles don't need parachutes. What does that mean? She'll tell us more in a short while. We'll also, in our relationship corner tonight, we talk about understanding body language with Giandre Hartman, who is the owner and course presenter at Micro Expressions Solutions. We learn more about how nonverbal communication can positively and sometimes even negatively affect interpersonal relationships. In the second hour of the talk shop tonight, we'll be talking about World Telecoms and Information Society Day, which is today. We'll be joined on the line by the Deputy Minister of the Department of Communications, Ms. Stella Tembisa Ndabeni, and talking about the theme women and girls in ICT. We have African affirmations brought to you by the Iskia Institute also coming your way and we wrap up tonight's show by talking to the film and publication board about uh, the classification guidelines. Uh, They're open for public comment and input and we'll be finding out exactly how that will be conducted and what exactly it is that the film and publication board is all about and how you can influence what games your children play, what films your children watch, as well as certain publications. Council member of the Film and Publication Board, Abase Mugoma, will be joining us. That is the lineup for the talk shop with me, Masichaba Mushwesho, tonight on SAFM 104 to 107. A very warm welcome to our guest, Rapelang Rabana, founding CEO of Yego Communications, an innovative Cape Town-based company that was one of the first in the world to offer voice over IP for mobile phones. She founded Yego when she was just 23 years old. She says that she didn't want to get into the corporate world because it is too competitive and cutthroat. <laughs> Rapelang Rabana, co-founder and CEO of Yego Communications, joining us in the studio. Good evening to you, ma'am, and welcome onto the talk shop. Good evening, and thank you for having me. 23 years old. Mm, You've just finished varsity, and you and your friends decide to start Yego Communications? Yeah. What um, were you thinking? (laughs) I wonder still, and naivety will always be one of those great blessings, because it's that time of your life where you think you can conquer everything. Um, We were at a place where we thought... We know so much about technology and would love to be able to figure out things we can do um, to solve problems that we had faced as students. So we thought about the cost of communication and thought, let's try and use the Internet to provide better, more affordable calls. As students, we were sending please call me's all the time, so it was a relevant problem to us. And we got going from there. And since then, we've been developing a number of products and technology. And the theme has stayed the same. We identify problems that are relevant to us that we've experienced and try to use it to find ways to move past that. Tell us, tell me about your interest in IT. How did that come about? It was actually quite accidental. Um, I ended up studying computer science at UCT largely because um, I had asked my brother to pick a course for me. Um, I wasn't very keen to study right then. I, I needed a gap year, but my parents, being very diligent black parents, said you will go to university. You had seven <laughs> distinctions in your matric year. Why do you want a gap year? I, I was tired. <laughs> I, I, I thought life was pretty exhausting. Um, but he suggested I do this and he was probably having a joke with himself and I ended up signing up and starting it. And even though I was, it was very hard and it was shocking, I've never seen programming or code before. It's not like I ever did this in my spare time or anything like that. But I chose to stay with it because... The whole process represented a power of creation that I didn't see in any of the other professions. Um, I looked around at finance and accounting when I was trying to find a way out of the situation. And I I left feeling that um, I would I most of most of my time was spent reviewing and evaluating and assessing and auditing stuff other people have done. And I want to be the one doing stuff. I wanted to create things and computer science and software in general allows you to conceive an idea and build it and implement it and create something from nothing. So it was that power of creation that really compelled me to stay. Meaning that growing up, you just, (laughs) you'd never thought I want to be a doctor. I want to be an astronaut. I, I, I thought I'd end up in the corporate world. Um, I had played, I'd, I'd done everything right at school. I'd worked through the system. I, I was good at working the system. But six months or so before graduation, I thought, 
but I've been doing this all along. High school, you start at the bottom, you get to the top of a trick and you're supposedly kings and then you go to university and, <laughs> and you're you freshers and you're useless again. <laughs> and suddenly I thought I'm supposed to go into a corporate environment and start this and do this for another 20 years. When do we just start doing the stuff we want to do? And that's why emotionally it was, or psychologically, it was very hard for me to reconcile myself with getting a job. I, I didn't think I would do things that would be fulfilling for me. We're talking to Rapelang Rabana, who is a co-founder and CEO of Yego Communications, a company that she started when she was just 23 years old. They've gone on to really be movers and shakers in the ITC arena. And we continue to talk to her and get up close and personal and just get clarification with regards to the relationship or partnership with Telfree Communications, a Swiss company. We're talking to Rapelang Rabana. SMSs, comments, questions you'd like to ask this dynamic young woman, 34701 is the SMS number. 34701, SMSs are charged at two rand, or you can call us on 0891 104207. 0891 104207. The Talk Shop. This is the talk shop with me, Master Chaba Mushweshwe, on SAFM 104 to 107. It is our mover and shaker slot time. And tonight we're talking to a young entrepreneur, Rapelang Rabana, founding CEO of Yego Communications. She started the company when she was just 23 years old, out of varsity, with uh, two of her ex classmates. And uh, the company has since grown from uh, success to success. When you started the company, um, here you are, you just finished varsity and you're thinking, I don't want to work for anybody. I don't want to get into the corporate world. Mm. Although, um, you know, that's, no you more. thought that's where I'm going to end up at some point, I guess, <laughs> in my life. Um, w- did you have any idea what mm. starting a business is all about? Did you have any idea where you needed to start? Um, look, it's, 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 it's one of those things where naivety really played a key role. If we knew how hard it was going to be, God knows we would have probably thought twice about it. But we, we were ambitious and hopeful and hugely optimistic. And we, being a business um, science graduates, we had some idea of what business management might entail and mm-hmm. we were able to develop our own plans. And more importantly, having computer science skills, we were able to actually start developing and prototyping our product before getting any additional partners. So we stayed at home or with our parents and ate their food and um, with a computer or laptop and internet access, we were able to start and we learned everything we needed to learn on Google. What was the reaction from the parents? Here you are. You, they've said <laughs> you are going to university. No gap year. You must mm. go to Europe if you want yes, a gap year. Yes, yes. There's no gap year. You're going to university. Now mm. they're expecting you to start working. And For here sure. you are saying. It, and it was tough. It was, it was very <laughs> prolonged discussions. And obviously they wanted me to get some more experience and to get some traditional exposure and build my own business um, reputation as mm. such. Um, and it was, there's still the concept that it would be a lot safer and it's less riskier. And I think the final sort of conversation with my father was around, but look at how fast the world is changing. Look at the financial crisis. Look at how things collapse. Can you genuinely tell me that a corporate is safer unequivocally? And he's like, you're right. Rather, so I felt it was rather it was much more important to be in a position where I was I was in charge of my own destiny, and there's no blinders. And often, it, as a as a staff member in a bigger corporate, you don't really know what's happening, mm-hmm. and you're just securing the fact that someone else will look after you. And doing this or starting the business controls your own destiny to the extent that you decide the things you spend your time on, what you think about, um, the projects you take on, and these are the things that ultimately decide who you become because how you spend your time is a critical factor in deciding all of that. And funding, because a lot of Mm. uh, entrepreneurs talk about the challenges of Mm, getting mm, funding mm. um, to even prototype and and, Mm. uh, their ideas. And I'm just thinking of uh, the challenges for tech entrepreneurs because it's still a relatively new field, so to speak, especially at that particular time. Sure. Um, It is still a difficult field to get funding for in South Africa. But because of of the nature of software, it's not 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 like you needed hundreds of thousands of rands to get going. It was literally cheap laptops of two or three thousand rands and an internet connection. And using our own knowledge and expertise and Google, we were able to start building stuff. So it wasn't that we needed a huge cash injection at the beginning. It was mm-hmm. much more about covering your own personal living expenses and getting favors from your parents to feed you. 
Um, and only after about a year after we started, were we able to source um, angel funding because we had a prototype and there was evidence of our commitment and our effort over, uh, over the previous year. Um, essentially, we through business networks and relationships I built in Varsity, um, I was introduced to someone who introduced me to someone and eventually met someone who was a former entrepreneur himself. And because he understood the technical, the technology climate, having developed um, a company and software himself, he was very keen on us and saw the commitment. And that was essentially our first angel investors until we met up with Tal Free a few years later. What is the climate mm. like for tech entrepreneurs, especially it's, when it comes to funding? I mean, it's particularly here, the arguments difficult. your father was making, mm. you're young, you don't have <laughs> yes. any kind of business experience, mm. um, you have no proven track record, so to speak, mm, to, mm, to mm. refer to. So sure. It is it is very difficult. Um, and whatever we do in future, even if we start a new product now, we will still face those challenges. It's, it's really because the risk models that we subscribe to our financial system subscribe to are still very traditional. There's, you need a traditional asset so that a bank can take something away if all things go wrong. They need, they need things like collateral and it's not the same environment as in Israel or in Silicon Valley where they're judging you on your competence and your ability to understand a product and get it right and make it good enough for people to want to buy. They evaluate things on, on very different metrics. And it's unfortunately a very sad thing, but it's something that will take many generations to fix because you'll find that in, in better environments, it will be second and third generation entrepreneurs who are actually providing funding for startup businesses. And historically, South Africa doesn't have much of that, especially in the black community. So you're, it's going to be a long road for us to correct that. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, the major institutions, even government institutions, tend to steer away from early stage technology companies because it's so hard to assess um, this, to assess the product, to assess the business and how to add value because they haven't been in that position, more importantly. So you basically mm. were doing it all alone. Um, what about mentors? What about some kind of um, mm. uh, um, you, you, you got an angel funder, mm. but someone who who's at least walked this road or mm, any mm. any assistance? I mean, I know you you keep on <laughs> Google. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're so glad this is something like Google. But um, you know, sure. uh, w- was the was or somebody that you looked up to that you could say this person in the South African context or even mm. in the African context made it in this field. That's where we're aiming to go. No, I can't honestly say that in the early years there was that sense of someone's footsteps I wanted to follow. And I've only really been able to access and benefit from mentors in the last um, three years. So for the initial four years or so, I can't really say I said I had that. The only mentors we saw and the people we looked up to were largely um, a number of the entrepreneurs and um, business people in Silicon Valley in the U.S. Those are the people we would read about and read their blogs and read about the things they were saying. We definitely didn't um, get our inspiration from um, any local mentors at the time. So you were just literally <laughs> feeling around in the dark and Definitely. hoping that you pressed the light switch at some point. We thought it was worth did. a try. <laughs> we, can, we can die trying or join a corporate. So, <laughs> Well, the, now I think I have a, mm. a, an understanding of where the philosophy eagles don't need parachutes comes from. But we'll be exploring that when we come back. We're talking to Rapelang Raba. The Talk Shop. This is The Talk Shop with me, Master Chaba Mushweshwe, on SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. A mover and shaker tonight is Rapelang Rabana, who is co-founder and CEO of Yego Communications, a company that she started when she was just 23 years old. Fresh out of varsity, they decided, uh-uh, we're going to try this, go big or go home. Now, what advice would you give to those entrepreneurs who are wanting to get mm. into um, the information communication technology uh, uh, sector? Right. Um, it's, I, I will always come back to education and the role of that. Um, things were so much easier for us because we could do most of the things we needed to ourselves. We didn't have to hire um, people to do it. We didn't have to hire consultants. And so in ICT in particular, a, a degree in information systems or computer science um, or information technology will be very, very useful in that. Um, just being competent in your field allows you to build the confidence in yourself to create new ideas and actually forge forward. And if you don't have that kind of confidence, you're likely not to be able to be comfortable enough to want to take a risk or do something interesting or great. 
And in terms of funding, I mean, it's a, I've got a very mm. interesting um, message coming through on our Facebook page, SAFM Radio, mm. coming in from Diseto uh, Chilwani, who says, we, are, we have a non-registered company in the ICT sector, and we want to register it, but we have insufficient funds. How would you advise us? Insufficient funds. So, I mean, I, I would assume the last time we registered companies, I thought it was quite um, a small amount of under uh, two or three hundred rands or so. I'm not too sure what it costs to register a company today. It's not um, two or three hundred rands, in but yeah, I okay. think it's, it's a sacrifice one can make, make. Mm. or it's money that one can raise up. It is capital got, yeah, that sure. one. It, the, the important thing with being an entrepreneur is that you're not, there isn't going to be someone who's going to come and do everything for you. Um, And whether, whatever your position, and there have been people who started businesses who were in much more disadvantaged positions. Than I am, but everyone finds a way. Whether you're working during the day and building money over years, you've got to find some money to be able to get going yourself. There isn't going to be anyone, any kind of funder who will help you to start. That's that's that has to come from your own volition, and that's part of entrepreneurship. And if you you've, you've got to find a way to pursue and keep working hard to generate the money to get going initially. Otherwise, it's not a testament to anybody else that you're as committed as you claim you are. Right. So there is a hurdle that you must pursue and cross yourself. You do say that young entrepreneurs shouldn't be looking for money, especially in the ICT sector, shouldn't mm-hmm. be looking for funding first off. Mm-mm-mm. Especially because software can be can be done in your home, in, in your in your parents in your parents' garage. You don't need all of this funding to get going. And it allows you to spend a lot more time analyzing the product and the business model that you're trying to build. The hardest part of a business isn't getting funding. The hardest part of a business is defining your competitive advantage and that unique selling point that's going to allow you to build enough of a customer base and that's something that is going to that takes years to figure out and evolves all of the time and you've got to hone in on that much more carefully before you get funding otherwise by the time you get it you'll be spending it on all the wrong things you also talk about uh, the need to share. Um, a mm. lot of people are, are, are wary of sharing their business ideas because they're scared that their ideas will get stolen, yes, yes. that you know, someone with much better resources, a much better support system mm. will run with the idea and will be able to run with it much better than they who they would and they are at that moment struggling. Um, wh- what is the value in sharing and how do I ensure that in this sharing, I'm mm. not sharing with the wrong people? It's, it's an interesting question and, and often comes up. I will always say that I do not believe that secrecy protects an idea. Um, if talking to someone about it to get some input or just sharing the idea with someone allows them to go and duplicate it immediately, it automatically means that you don't have a competitive advantage. And if you launch tomorrow, person B would be able to copy you and suddenly there isn't a compelling proposition anymore. Um, an advantage in the market and and a compelling value proposition comes from a much deeper understanding. It either comes from expertise that you have built up in in a field, which is the approach we took. We went into mobile voice of IP at a time that was very early in the global market. Um, or you have a specific resource or access to a resource that other people have or certain relationships that other people won't have. Those those are the sources of advantages and it's not secrecy that protects it. Um, and if you think, and if you're already at a stage where it'll be taken away, um, by the time you talk about it, you've got to really go and assess what your personal value adds to this idea is. Um, and until you've established that, only then would you have a sustainable proposition going forward. Looking at some of the SMSs coming in, uh, here's one that says, uh, I'm completely proud of you, Kaz. Keep working the system as you have done with such suave. Uh, when you're ready to hire me, my bags are packed and ready. I'm going to jump to the conclusion that you know which Kaz that particular SMS is from. Uh, another SMS says, I just want to ask Rapilang if she's involved in any kind of mentorship mm. with the youth. And uh, another SMS says, um, this, woman, this young woman is 23 years old. Anyone can start a company and declare themselves CEO. She started the company when she was, when she was, was being the operative mm-hmm. word, 23. And uh, this was in 2007. This was in 2006. And six, yes, 2006. Yes, yes. So and uh, she was uh, included in Mail and Guardian's 200 Young South Africans You Must Take to Lunch feature. This was in 2008. And we all know the caliber of uh, young people <laughs> that make it onto that list. She was selected as an Endeavor entrepreneur. And uh, she was a finalist in the 
BBQ Young Business Achiever Awards in 2007. So this is a young woman who has really... Um, had a lot of focus on her. Were you shocked? I mean, here you mm. are. You, you're just fresh out of varsity. You decide, no, you know what? Let's start this thing. Let's see where it goes. And mm. then the next thing, you're everywhere. You're in every magazine one can open. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk to you. Here's a young woman in the ICT sector who's doing it. It, it might look like that, but there's a favorite <laughs> quote that it takes seven years to achieve overnight success. You know, <laughs> So we, we've been at it for years and yeah. I consider myself old and tired already. That's... that's <laughs> How bad home. And that's how it feels, to me. it feels that it's been that long. You know, what What shocked me was um, more than anything else was um, being invited to the World Economic Forum in January of this year. For me, that was that was the earth shattering time where you're suddenly with all these global leaders and business people and CEOs of huge multinationals. And one minute you're I'm on a panel with Mohammed Yunus of Grameen Bank and Klaus Schwab, the founder of Forum. And then it's mind blowing. Then it's oh, wow. This, this is really, really interesting. I, I may not have gone the corporate route and got on all the perks, but this is really nice. And in, <laughs> I think it was in 2008 when you um, uh, uh, had your partnership with uh, Telfree Communications. Mm-hmm. How did that come about? Telfree is a, is a Swiss-based company. Yeah, it's a Swiss headquartered company, but they've got South African operations. And essentially together, we were a full voice of IP operator, essentially another telecoms carrier um, under the new regulations. Um, they started looking at us because they were interested in the mobile voice of IP applications we were doing. And as an internet-based operator, um, all of these kinds of mobile applications and value adds were going to be important um, going forward. So that's really how that partnership, they, they, they essentially found out about us in Cape Town and we flew up and met with them. And six months or so later, we thought we're, we're reading from the same page and they're bringing some telecoms expertise and also exposure to the SME market, which we hadn't had yet um, and our ability to develop really innovative products that are, are groundbreaking and in, in, in the relevant space going forward and telecommunications in South Africa is changing in general. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is it getting cheaper? Um, I know that was it, one of the reasons it, you said <laughs> earlier you started. You started. <laughs> you, exactly. It, 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 didn't, it didn't get cheaper on, on a mass scale, largely because for new entrants like ourselves, um, it was still hugely uncompetitive. Um, we would, for example, have to access wholesale rates that were much higher than the retail rates that the mobile operators had in their own shops. So it was, it was a deeply uneven market, but it, but it is certainly getting there. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting things happening in the market now, and competition is going to expand much more beyond price. I want to talk about mentorship when mm. we come back. Uh, the question that was asked uh, uh, via SMS. We're talking to Rapelang Rabana, founding CEO of Yego Communications. The Talk Shop. We will be talking to the Film and Publication Board later on on the show to talk about uh, the guidelines and what came out of it and how you can also have your say with regards to what your children uh, play and what they watch. I'm looking at uh, some of the messages coming through on our Facebook page, SAFM Radio. Bana Mora says, congratulations, you are an inspiration. Nati Mukwena says, why is it important to have a business mentor? Before we even answer, Nati, let's respond to the SMS around mental. Are mm. you involved in mentorship at the moment? I'm not involved in any formal mentorship schemes. But if anyone asks me, um, I will I will certainly follow up and, and provide an opportunity to talk or have coffee. Um, I was speaking at a conference earlier this morning, Young Women Leadership Conference, and a few young women came up to me and I'm meeting some of them over the weekend. What I find, though, is that there will be thousands of requests, but it comes down to follow through and execution. Most people simply just don't follow through. And that's what happens. Do you think that there's a proper understanding of Mm. what a mentor is, the role of a mentor? No, I don't think so. A lot of the time I get the sense when people want mentorship, they want to be saved, which which is not the case at all. Um, A mentor can't avoid the obstacles for you. A mentor can't help you skip something. They can certainly give you guidance and give you some tips, but it's much more to, to receive good mentorship. You've got to be able, you've got to be a good mentee. And that means someone who's doing stuff for themselves already. Um, you can't help someone who is not helping themselves. And you've got to come with that position in, in a mental relationship. Having said that, is mm. it important to have a business mentor? This is from Nati Mugwen. I, I myself and many other entrepreneurs will say that we didn't have un- uh, mentors in the early days. It's, it's, it's certainly perhaps much more fashionable now, but 
um, I mean, I think even, I think there's a gentleman called Vusi Temekwa and he will say that this mentorship thing is, is overrated. The hardest, you've just got to get going and you will meet people along the way who will add value at the relevant point in your life. But the important thing is to get going. I wouldn't say that you... Um, mentorship is a is a prerequisite to success. It can certainly be beneficial, but it is not the starting point. The starting point is you. Eagles don't need parachutes. Mm. What do you mean? <laughs> of course they don't. They've got wings. We don't have wings. I know, I know. Um, it, it came from the idea that when, when an eagle hunts or something and they leap off, um, they literally go for the kill and you don't see them backtracking or turning away or, or giving up and a lot of the time with entrepreneurs you sort of take the leap and sort of oh no never mind let, let me go back to whatever else i was doing before and you keep on backtracking and it's much more about saying that success is a is a commitment to sustained effort and once you leap you're leaping to succeed and you just keep going for that thank you so so mm. much for your time it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you it has been uh, you are a true inspiration. I agree with uh, some of the SMSs coming in and the messages on Facebook. Really, really great. What is next for Yego? It's it's an exciting time in South African telecommunications. Um, we, we, we've seen a number of things in, in the cell phone space where the prepaid rates have been dropped and the like, and it's, it's coming to a place where the mobile operators are moving to where they are in developed markets, where prices are lower and they are forced by competition to start providing more innovative services and people um, getting more value add than calls and SMSs, which we've had for 20 years and nothing since. Um, and you will find that as they seek new revenue streams and as they seek new products and services, they're, they're also much op much more open to partnerships and collaborations. In, in, in markets like the U.S. operators like Sprint, they have already partnered with Google Voice um, to be able to provide additional services they couldn't provide to their customers to them. Um, and I expect that in South Africa, this will create a new climate for openness and collaboration because for competition, you're going to need to enroll partnerships and, and services of everyone else. And as a technology company, that's a very exciting thing for us. We wish you all the best. Thank you so much Great. for your time. That's uh, Rapelang Rabana, co-founder and CEO of Yego Communications, joining us in the studio, talking about her successes and the company that she started when she was just 23 years old, Yego Communications, and how it has grown from strength to strength, strength to strength, strength to strength, strength. To strength.